what's up guys I'm going to talk a little bit today about Black Ops 3 and the, uh, the issues related to how the game runs I've been running it for a few months I'm sure like most of you have and um, been learning some things about the config file um, and how it works with the game uh, and I've tried a lot of changes um, to get it to where I need it to be and it seems to be working fine so what I'm going to do is just go over briefly some of the things that I've changed in the config file that have made the gameplay a lot faster the frame rates are a lot faster uh, very little lag I'm getting really good ping uh, just about any time I connect to a server uh, regardless of where the server is located so but I want to talk mostly about the config file in the game itself uh, so try some of these things and see what happens before you do make a copy of any original config file that you have in the game uh, and, and name it copy so that way the worst case scenario you can always set it back to default if you want to go back or you have the original to fall back on now you can delete the config file and then when you start a game up again it will regenerate with the latest instructions that are provided uh, through the game but the, the the game's config file is literally designed with a game user and the gamer user in mind by providing information and instructions on how to change things and what, how they affect the quality. Treyarch has been one of the best that I've seen at allowing the config file to be modified in the past and this particular game's version is one of the most user-friendly versions I've ever seen available uh, and it gives you a range of options <clears throat> pretty much on every line and it explains you know what the lo what the high-end and low-end version uh, of each option does and how it affects your gameplay. Um, I'm currently running an i7-5820, 16 gigs DDR4, 980 Ti, super clocked, uh, 2850 Evo, two, uh, 250 gig uh, RAID 1, and then a Seagate hybrid drive for all my games. I'm getting, I have absolutely zero issues with this game. The game is fast as heck, um, running an average of 138 to 143 frames per second at 1080p on a 144Hz monitor. CPU usage is running between 15 and 17 percent. My RAM is only hitting about 3.75 to 4 gigs, and this is after about six to eight hours of gameplay. So, some of these things that are in the config file can affect can affect your gameplay and actually make a difference. There's a ton of stuff your GPU is trying to render during this game that honestly, unless you get all giggity over appearance, really isn't needed in an FPS shooter. So, a lot of these things you can turn down. Um, from max or ultra to high or medium and get a really really good gameplay out of this game so just something to consider now I'm gonna go over some of the things that are uh, changed on the game and, and explain some of the reasoning behind it now what I'm showing here is only the things that I've changed there's a ton of other things in the config file and if I'm not showing it here then more than likely I haven't just left I've just left that alone and gone on to something else to uh, to change so only change the things that I'm showing here on this video and it'll, I'll pop that up here in just a second okay so let's go into the discussion about uh, the config file in Black Ops 3 and actually show you some of the things that I've changed once again I mentioned before that only change these things that I'm showing you here everything else that's in the config file can stay the same like it is uh, and really hasn't had much of an impact on the gameplay for me um, first you want to navigate to the drive letter where your games are installed for example it might be C program files x86 steam steam apps common call of duty black ops 3 and then players you're going to find the config file there you're going to find several other things there I have heard people say that they've had issues at startup in the game with the cinematic video so in that same folder you'll see a file called bo3 global logo logo sequence mkv mkv video file um, you can uh, rename this file um, and basically what that does is it turns that video off in the game now before you re before you rename it you might consider duplicating it and moving the duplicate of the original somewhere else and just keeping the copy in here um, that would be something to think about I've heard people say that uh, doing this um, 
basically all they did was just get rid of the video, but it's still they still got a black screen for the same amount of time that the logo sequence was normally running. So it, it helped in, in some cases. In some cases, it was basically the same with just nothing on the screen. So that's just an option for you. Okay, so let's get into the normal config file on some of the changes that I've made. And remember that only the only the changes that I have here are what I've changed in the config file. Everything else has stayed the same. So don't make any changes to anything but what I show you here, um, and you should be good. Okay, the most important one is the very first one in the config file, which is the frame rate cap or the max FPS for your game. This is based off of what the game detects as your native refresh rate for your monitor. Whatever your max refresh rate is, whether it's 60, 100, 120, 144, whatever, it's going to show here. That's what it's registering to the to the config file. You want to set this to anywhere from 1 to 5 frames per second below whatever the max target for your monitor is. This allows for all the frames to get to the monitor without buffering, without going over. And the over is a lot of times where people are experiencing the stutter, I think, in the frames because it's not rendering all the frames that's thrown at it. So it has to be able to render every frame that it's given. So set this below your monitor's uh, native refresh rate. The next one is a show current frame rate on screen, draw FPS. It, by default it's set to zero which is off. Uh, you can turn this on and change it to one which will display an FPS counter uh, in your on your screen for the game while you're playing. Now if you're using something like Nvidia Shadow Play, MSI Afterburner or some other type of software you can also enable a frame counter with their software so you don't necessarily have to use this one but this is available to you if you don't have access to those other softwares. Okay. The next thing is toggle frame rate smoothing. Smoothing frame rate default is zero. I changed this to one and it helps maintain a more constant frame rate throughout the matches that I'm playing. It's almost like turning on VSync using the, the config file. The next feature is maximum number of si simultaneous human corpses, which in is as in is is just basically the same thing as ragdoll from the past config files. So basically, by default, there are 32 uh, ragdoll events that can occur on the screen at any one time. If you're killing people across the match, across the maps, and people are just there's dead bodies everywhere. So this is just one thing that that the game is rendering at a very very high number. You can drop this down to four, and it's just fewer things that the, that the graphics card has to process. Okay. The next one is number of frames the driver is allowed to queue. A lower value uh, improves latency but decreases performance. So, that being said, zero is the default, which is the lowest value. Uh, you can try anywhere from one, two, or three, or up to four. I've tried one, two, and three. Three seems to be the best for me, so I left it at three. But um, that's going to basically allow um, the frames to, to remain queued on the, on the VRAM. Okay. Uh, fraction of video memory usage target. This is basically, in essence, the VRAM of your GPU, whatever it's capable of. Okay, so 1 or 1.0 would be 100% of your GPU VRAM's capability, whatever it is, 2 gig, 4 gig, whatever. Okay, you want to set this between 0.75 and 0.95 and not go up to the full amount of VRAM. This basically helps create a, an artificial overhead ceiling of RAM, for, of RAM buffer for the GPU when it's rendering. So that helps there. The next group relates to millions of instructions per second or MIPS or level of deep detail LODs in graphical performance. The lower the number, the higher the quality. So your card is having uh, issues getting FPS, you might want to consider reducing the numbers to increase FPS. And basically you're going to sacrifice this maybe at a small cost of a little bit less than it and you know, a little less than uh, stellar graphical image. I mean, but we're not playing Skyrim, we're not playing Witcher, you know, we're not playing something that aesthetics is a big factor in the game. We're playing an FPS game here, that's all we're doing. So we want those frames to increase so we can get better better kills and better uh, gameplay against other players okay the default setting for just about everything in this area is zero which is max or ultra okay so what I've done is I've basically gone through and I've, I've turned a lot of these things down or even in some cases off okay so LOD to drop on models for example uh, lower numbers are higher so basically I changed this to uh, 2 which is going to be like a medium high not quite ultra so it's about 25 percent reduction in overhead and it does increase frame rate 
the next one is force 2 anisotropic, uh, 1 for per material, 2 for or force 16x anisotropic. I changed mine to 2, which is 16x. Seems to work fine. Number of millions of instructions per second to drop on streaming textures. I lowered this number to default to zero. You can set it to one or two. I set mine to two. Seems to be fine. Uh, the number of million instructions per second to drop on effects and dynamic decals. I mean, really? Decals? Or, if, this is just more stuff that eye candy that the game has, that the GPU has to render in the game. Turn these down. You can set it to one, two, three, whatever. But you've got a lot of room to play here between zero and 15 to determine what's working for you. Uh, the number of millions of instructions per second to drop on reflections, reflections being water reflections off, you know, the sun reflecting off the water, uh, sunlight reflecting off of windows, glass, what have you. Uh, so this is set to zero, which is max. Uh, you can turn this down. I've turned it down to four, which is about 25% reduction. It does reduce rendering and increase uh, FPS. The next thing to talk about is number of man's instructions per second to drop on sun shadows. Um, of course, default is zero or max. Now, let me talk about this just a little bit. If you remember correctly in Advanced Warfare, there was a couple maps that relied heavily on sun shadowing solar, for example, and I believe uh, Instinct was the other one. Uh, solar, when I, when I turned this feature down or turned it off, the, the daylight environment was slightly darker. Uh, shadows were slightly darker, but overall the gameplay was fine. My FPS was higher. I didn't have to render so much detail in the game to the point where it was actually affecting FPS. So you're reducing that overhead um, and making that graphics card run a little bit easier and didn't have to be taxed. Okay. Um, force the lowest means of instructions to stay loaded instead of streaming. Basically, what it's, what it's basically saying, instead of offloading uh, previously loaded uh, MIPS, it's going to keep some of them in, in, uh, in memory uh, and allow for uh, uh, you know, additional memory to be loaded on top. But there's some of uh, lower instructions will stay on hand on your video card. Default is set to zero, which is off. I set it to one, which is turning it on, which enables the MIPS, MIPS to stay in memory. Okay, the next thing, uh, the next couple things deals with um, light shadows, sun shadows, both of these the same thing, just set them, the default is zero, set those to one, so the options are zero, one, on or off, basically high or low, so I set these to one, and uh, it, like I said, it, it, the maps are slightly darker, but overall it's fine, you can still see the game, it's pretty easy to see. Um, the next thing is enable multi-sampled soft shadows. I think the default on this is zero, and I actually um, turned it on. Um, so I set this to on. Um, this, I think, basically counter, and not only counters, but it actually helps when you set these down. This actually changes a little bit. Volumetric sun. I think I turned this off. Same thing with these. Rather than turning them down, I turned it off. Uh, so I don't have the volumetric sun. Uh, once again, light shafts going through the tree, lights shining through the trees, all that stuff is gone. I can see a lot better in the map between the tree environments, um, maps and stuff like that. Uh, the next one is per object motion blur. Now, if you turn this off, you don't and there's three options. There's off, auto, or on. If you turn this off, the next line becomes a non-factor because motion blur quality can, set, can be set to low, medium, or high. But when you turn it off, it is completely off. And no matter what you do here, it's off. So if you set it to auto, it's going to choose between low, medium, high based on what it sees that the graphics card can render. If you set it to on, then you can actually program it to be low, medium, or high manually. Um, so that's how that works. The last thing that I checked was uh, uh, better lighting for skin. Basically, um, subsurface scattering, zero is no or off, and one is yes or on. I turn this to zero, turned it off. I don't really care what my skin looks like while I'm in the game. All I care about is getting those bullets down range and getting those kills and getting the score. So some of these things, like I said, a lot of these features you can turn off or turn down to the point where you're going to in get increased gameplay, uh, quality of game. It's going to run faster. It's not going to have so much uh, uh, to render for the game. You're going to get a slight reduction in, in graphical aesthetics, but who cares? It's, you know, we want frame rate. We want frame rate and we want more frame rate so that's the most important thing to factor into this
Okay. So that's pretty much everything related to what I've changed in the config file. And, and all of this um, is related to every single bit of this is related to graphical um, presentation of the game. I, there was not a whole lot uh, in the config file uh, for network configuration like max packets, uh, max dupe, or anything like that. It was mostly related to frame rate. I think that they're not going to allow too much of the uh, max dupe packets and stuff. That's stuff you can do literally within your router. You can change MTU packet size, uh, you know, port triggering, port forwarding. Um, I think there was, there might have been the possibility of maybe. Uh, uh, max ping it might have been I can I can't quite recall but I didn't really mess with that I just stay, basically yeah. dealed with uh, with the uh, the graphical presentation of the game and how it runs with my graphics card and uh, made a huge difference now you, you I'm gonna have this posted on our website uh, www.thetrademarkclan.com uh, you can check us out there uh, and uh, you can get this as, it'll also be posted on YouTube on our YouTube channel for their clan so anytime you feel that you need to go check that out you're more than welcome to um, once again uh, this is our website here the trademarkclan.com and uh, check us out and uh, you might find some other helpful uh, tips and, and hints re regarding uh, some of the games that you're playing thanks a lot